there was this political unease of how to deal with the conservative sunni kingdoms uh, but that interestingly mr modi has turned it around and today we have a very good relationship with both these kingdoms today india is interested and pakistan has declined that pakistan has very little to offer except for asking money more money all the time from its gulf friends uh, while india is offers a business opportunity uh, which pakistan does not So, you know, in this week's Raja Mandala, you looked at, you've taken off from this meeting between the Indian and SA and his US counter, US and UAE counterpart in Saudi Arabia. It was a surprise story. How much do you think it's about this kind of new data, which has been going on for a while, this dehyphenation of Israel, Palestine, I two U two, which is India, Israel, UAE, and the US, is from October twenty two. How much of it is about the Indian foreign policy establishing establishment becoming more open? and also regional changes the i us them kind of conflicts in the middle east evolving now yeah. being less sharp yeah no it was not hesitation i think uh, under nehru india actively dissociated from uh, the the imperial tradition of uh, the british raj uh, and uh, you know the whole idea that we must stand up against uh, neo colonialism imperialism that that became the dominant motive uh, while while pr- in practical terms i mean it was a neighboring region uh, the question of india's interests or large numbers but then i think we increasingly took an ideological position of solidarity with the arab nations rather than approaching them from first principles what are india's interests here how do we pursue them uh, so so i think that was part of the problem but that middle east is long gone so you said uh, are there changes in the region is it about changes in the india's world view uh, so i think it's both uh, because that world where the arabs got radicalized uh, took on the big fight against israel uh, today one by one most arab countries major arab countries have normalized ties with uh, with israel uh, some day saudi arabia if it does it then i think you and in actually most major ones would have would have automatically done second i think within the region today uh, there is less ideological uh, approach that they w- they are looking to develop themselves they are looking for partners they are trying to diversify their strategic partnership so i think this is a new middle east i think india bit by bit had to adapt but i think there were a number of hesitations which continued right into the upa government Uh, there was a hesitation to work with the us there was a hesitation though we established diplomatic relationship under a congress government in 92 uh, that we don't want to be seen with them because no indian prime minister went to israel but mr modi has changed that uh, and third the relationship with the saudis and the uae uh, though indians had you know we had almost uh, millions of indians there we buy most of the oil from there there was this political unease of how to deal with the conservative sunni kingdoms uh, but that interestingly mr modi has turned it around and today we have a very good relationship with both these kingdoms so so i think the fundamentals in these three areas relationship how do we see the western partnership how do we see the uh, the question of uh, you know the the saudi and the and the iranians all these have fundamentally changed so so uh, this is a, a a a different region and a different indian foreign policy you know this the other thing which a lot of people have been saying i mean just immediately after the standard analysis has been that a lot of this proactivism has to do with china and just that moment when china in beijing you saw the iranian leaders and the saudi leader representatives sign you know establishing relations again under chinese susan not well under chinese at least influence or involvement as well as belt and road initiative across asia there's a whole china's putting in money how much of this is like a is that this a border in west asia kind of is a response to china's assertiveness in the region you know china is barely coming into the region actually they're quite new to this part of the world i mean but as the second largest economy in the world their influence is bound to grow everywhere i mean not just in the middle east i mean they're active in latin america in the pacific islands so they just share economic resources take china everywhere and they're good at implementing projects so i think Uh, but in the middle east it's really one of the last neighboring regions they're trying to make their presence felt but i think uh, just one op one photo op with the saudis and the uh, iranians because they were already normalizing you know engaged in a dialogue but that doesn't make them as they're about they're not about to take over middle east 
their investments are going up their purchase of oil are going up they're doing a lot more technological work in the region or uh, they've stepped up the diplomatic effort but the us remains the dominant player in the in the middle east uh principal provider of security uh, it has long dealt with all these countries so so i don't think uh, americans are about to leave or chinese are not in a rush to replace the americans either so they want to slowly expand their influence so i think we should not see it purely through the chinese lens after all this is our neighboring region after all this is our neighborhood i mean from bombay to the gulf is so so little distance so i don't think we need china to uh, to to stir us into doing things in the middle east we have already 8 million indian workers there we buy most of our oil there but i think what has been missing in the indian policy uh, historically too much of ideology too little pragmatism and uh, too little uh, you know boldness in terms of doing things because uh, even today i mean i think the whole focus is on the diaspora the focus is on how much oil are we getting rather than thinking about the middle east as a strategic entity uh, they have their concerns uh, they're not looking at the world all through the religious prism there's been very little public debate forget the governments on the reforms that saudi arabia has so we have a blank spot on the middle east Yeah. uh there is a narrative that has been built over the decades and i think time has come for us to take a fresh look at this region uh, which is going to be even more important one because they're rich they got the money or people are going and there are a lot more things we can do with them just to take off from what you said you made a very interesting point in the article which everyone should read it's on the indianexpress.com and hopefully wherever you're watching this video there should be a link in the description somewhere uh so this uh is that what you like the reform in the middle east for, for a long time pakistan was seen as a sort of successor state almost by the brits and then the americans for, for of inheriting the post independence rule in the middle east religion to some small extent must have been a part of that pakistan's own then relatively economic better economic potential that role is now shifting away how do you see the internal reforms in saudi arabia and the uae just to name the two countries when are directly involved in this yeah. juncture making it easier yeah. for india no because independence coincided with partition i mean i think we tended to view the region uh, through you know the pakistan was going to the region and saying look we are muslim we are brothers so therefore come with us against india but i think is one thing for pakistan to say but i think we also tended to view the region in the same lens well look the arab countries are not dreaming and thinking only about islam or religion all the time they want progress they want economic cooperation they want friends they want partners so i think we need to shake out of that image imagery that this is all about islam and pakistan i think that phase is over the fact that today mr jake salivan when he talked about i2 u2 or today is talking about saudi arabia india uae and us working together there's no mention of pakistan when they talk about connectivity Uh, between the arabian peninsula and the subcontinent there's no reference to pakistan as you mentioned historically they turned to pakistan because india was not interested uh, and two two things have changed one today india is interested and pakistan has declined that pakistan has very little to offer except for asking money more money all the time from its gulf friends uh, while india is offers a business opportunity uh, which pakistan does not and i think so how we think about the region and our india pak problem the dynamic has changed fundamentally are uh, they not looking at us through the prism of pakistan uh, we need to be uh, you know comfortable about that and reach out to them and do what we can i mean uh, nor should we view them through the eyes of america or china these are our neighbors we have a historic relationship we can build a relationship on our own terms and if the americans want to partner us welcome if french want to partner us they're welcome Uh, so i think we should move forward with confidence uh, because the gulf is eager to work with us on a lot more areas the final question now we have the i2 u2 meeting big announcement in october 21 now there's been this meeting what is the next thing we can sort of look forward to with this kind of collaboration whether with the us or with others but in this case the us and uh, saudi arabia and the emirates particularly in, in the coming months see the i2u2 for example announced because it was focused on economics they announced one major project uh, which was food security that israel would fund the building of food parks in india uh, because you know arabian peninsula is short of food so uh, we can you know use new technologies from israel and the us you know grow food here export it to the uh, to the to the gulf i mean that's that's one idea here in this case uh, with saudi arabia we are talking about uh, a major connectivity project uh, building railway lines within arabia 
uh, then connecting to India through the seaports. Uh, we're also looking at uh, connecting the Arabian Sea to the uh, to the Mediterranean. Uh, so that uh, you, you know, all these years we've been talking about, oh, we'll go through Iran, Afghanistan, uh, into, you know, in the deep, uh, you know, bubbles of Asia, uh, which uh, it's not happening. I mean, though it's our interests are there. Uh, these are in bad places. There are conflicts. While the sea routes through Arabian Peninsula are far more productive. Yeah. And unlike Iran or uh, Afghanistan or uh, Saudi Saudis and the UAE, there are trading states. Yeah. They're into business. Uh, they want to do uh, trade, I mean, which is not where Iran is because it's still a, a different type of state. So I think uh, uh, we need to focus more on this region and the region, what it offers to us. And the I2U2, the Saudi, uh, all these will offer, I think, a lot more new possibilities for us. Thank you so much, sir. Everyone, read the piece. It's on MedianExpress.com and we will see you next week. So thank you so much. Thank you, Akash.